On today's episode, we are talking all about blood sugar and from a perspective that you may not have heard before, because this is a topic that is really important and we want to look far beyond just fasting glucose. We're talking about how things like inflammation, our sex hormones, insulin, our liver, our activity and sleep and stress all play a role in our blood sugar levels throughout the day. So take a listen. If you like this, please don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share the show. Live your life within the moment, moment. And don't go wait until the morning, morning. You never know when it is over, over. All that I know is... Happy Monday. Hello. Welcome back to the Food Code. I am Becca. I am with Liz. We are co-hosts of the Food Code. What, three years running now? Four almost? Yeah, two, uh, three years. Crazy. Time flies. Yeah. I'm also personally scared to listen to our first episodes. You know, and I I actually was listening to someone the other day and they were talking about how a lot of, they're like, I've talked to people that are like nervous to start a podcast and I'm like, listen, no one's going to hear you for the first like year because no one's going to (laughs) know. And I was like, that's so true because it took, I mean, as with everything, it takes time. It took us a while to build up a decent following that was like consistent. Yeah. So if you are listening to this episode, how can you help us? We don't run advertising on here, interrupting your listening experience, which to me is quite annoying and frustrating Mm -hmm. when I listen to other podcasts. Sometimes I just stop the podcast. It's a good podcast, but every freaking three minutes I have to go through the ads, you know, Um, and it's not, not one ad anymore. It's multiple ads, it seems, almost back to back for some of them. Um, And listen, I get it. It's how they're making money, but we don't do that. We do this as our sad project, if you will, from the normal day-to-day work that we do, which is running Fit Mom Lifestyle with a team of practitioners who help women around the world get to the root cause of what is going on with their body, the dysfunction, and work to restore balance and help them heal. So how do you help us grow the show? You share it with anyone and everyone, whether or not they care. You just open your mouth and you're like, man, you got to listen to these two chicks. Sometimes they're really entertaining. Sometimes they teach me a lot of good things. Sometimes they give me the gut check, the tough love. Um, And so rate, review, subscribe, share the show. That's the best thing. If you are sharing it on Instagram, if it's an episode that resonates with you, we would love to see that. So you can tag us at the poop queen and at the hormone queen. So we, again, don't put any ads on here because we want you guys to get the most out of this. Your time is precious and so is ours. So. Yeah, we've been doing this for three years. Um, We work with women currently in the US, Canada, and the United Kingdom. And our passion is everything holistic nutrition. If you've got an issue, a symptom that is maybe common but is not normal, we're going to get to the root cause of that because your constipation is not a laxative issue. Your, you know, hormone imbalances are not a birth control. you know, deficiency, deficiency. right? Um, so everything from detox, drainage, parasites, gut, hormones, food intolerances, inflammation, blood sugar, which we're going to talk a lot about today, stress, autoimmune, all of those things are things that we help women improve. So today we're going to keep it straight to the point. We're getting into the topic of blood sugar. And this is something that many people don't really understand. And it's a lot of people don't understand it because their doctors don't explain it to them. Mm -hmm. And perhaps, dare I say, some doctors don't understand the widespread impact on the body that we're going to run through today because it's very complex with blood sugar. It is not just the foods that you eat. It is not just fasting glucose or A1C, right? We're going to look at many other markers on blood work. We're going to look at two hours postprandial blood sugar levels, and averages throughout the day, maybe using a continuous glucose monitor, things like that. Uh, And there's many, many things that impact our blood sugar, not just everyone, you know, who thinks, oh, if I eat carbohydrates, that's the only thing here and you got to demonize all the carbohydrates. So we're going to dive into that today. And we're going to give you the truth of blood sugar along with a little bit of one-on-one education. Yep. I am excited because I think that CGMs are very trendy lately. Mm -hmm. Um, People talk a lot about blood sugar, as they should, on social media. Um, I think blood sugar is one of the big root causes 
Um, we talk a lot about, you know, root issues. I think the gut is a large player. Um, I think inflammation is a large player, but I think blood sugar is one of the biggest large players. Um, it can really cause a lot of issues uh, that kind of perpetuate and landslide per se. Um, so let's start with the very basic. What is blood sugar? Like when we say blood sugar, what does that mean? Blood sugar is also known as glucose, which is why when you get a fasting glucose test, that's what you're looking at. Um, and it's basically the body's preferred source of energy. So when you check blood sugar levels, you check the amount of blood sugar present in the blood at that time. So your, your sugars essentially should get absorbed into your cells and used as a source of energy. It plays a role in hunger, cravings, energy, brain health, mood stability, weight management, sleep quality, many other things. Um, that's why it's so important. And, and I think that a lot of people are like, well, I'm not diabetic. I'm not, you know, my, my fasting glucose was 95. It's, it, you know, by the way, that's not good. Um, it's not diabetic, but it's not ideal. And the one thing that we always are told and mention is like fasting glucose is 12 hours fasted. Mm -hmm. If you are having issues with 12 hours fasted, issues have been going on for a long time. Because what we want is two hours fasted to look just like baseline, which we'll talk a little bit about, more about what that means. But basically, there's two hormones that regulate your blood sugar. There's insulin and there's glucagon. Insulin is excreted by the pancreas when you consume carbohydrates, even sometimes protein, because protein can be converted into sugar as well. Mm -hmm. Insulin's job is basically to facilitate the transfer of that sugar into your cells. So you eat a bagel. Your blood sugar increases pretty rapidly because bagels are pretty simple sugars. Um, and then insulin is get, get, gets told to get released to go around and shuttle that blood sugar that has risen in the bloodstream into cells, which brings blood sugar's levels back down into a normal range. They should spike. They should go back down. They shouldn't spike too much. And they should come back down in a reasonable time, a.k.a. basically two hours postprandial. Yeah. So I want to talk about a couple problems with the conventional medicine model. So first and foremost, the stats are someone could be trending towards a diabetic state for four to five years before they're officially diagnosed with type two diabetes, because again, they're only looking at that fasting glucose. That's one moment in time. That's one measure. And it's essentially looking at like, okay, you kind of emptied the tank, you depleted the tank mm -hmm. over the course of the last 12 hours. Now, when we think about glucagon, part of glucagon's job is to not let your blood sugars get too low. So if you start getting down like below 70, 60, 50, your liver is going to create glucose. It's going to release stored glucose back into the bloodstream because this is a very tightly regulated mechanism within the body. So when we look at our like kind of optimal ranges, like waking, you want to be somewhere between like 70 and 90. There's, you know, some people say like 75, 86, blah, yep. blah, blah, but somewhere there, 70 to 90. The research I've read has been, if you looked at your average for the day with trends, you would come out around an average of 89. Well, with conventional medicine for a long time, you know, they were kind of looking at, eh, if anybody's below a hundred, you know, we'll take it yep. essentially, right? Now, if somebody's kind of, you know, in the nineties, they might say, yeah, let's keep an eye on this. But they aren't always checking an A1C. So a com uh, complete blood count is where, excuse me, a complete metabolic panel is where you're going to see your fasting glucose. So that's kind of a pretty standard panel. Whereas an A1C or what we prefer even in addition to these is a fasting insulin. Those are separate blood tests. Yep. And some doctors say, well, you're not you know, flagging for type two diabetes, so we don't need to run these. Or you, they just give you a heck about it, which is kind of frustrating. And so again, just remember that fasting glucose, it's only one moment in time and it can be heavily impacted on things that you ate the night before. So if your blood sugars are unstable, paint this picture, you wake up at 5 a.m. like Becca and I do, right? You are hungry, but you've got to be fasted to go in for this lab. Maybe you start to feel a little bit anxious or anxiety um, symptoms here. Well, you could be dipping with blood sugar. Maybe you even like feel a little bit tired. Maybe you're really craving things. Um, you just don't feel well overall. Like you're feeling maybe hangry or brain fog or moody. So those are just some kind of common signs of blood sugar riding low. So if blood sugar is dipping, now the body is creating it through a process called gluconeogenesis. And when they snap that picture of you at 
801 in the morning for this fasting glucose, you could be higher mm -hmm. because your body's given you, you know, that peak. So it's just not by itself a good way to depict if someone's blood sugar levels are stable. Yeah. Absolutely. So how we like to check with our clients, if we suspect, we don't do this with every client, we, we get a blood panel basically with every client that comes in that has fasting insulin, that has A1C, that has fasted glucose. So we can kind of look at all of those. Um, but if we suspect after working our client through our phases, maybe things are not resolving how we want to, or weight still not responding, we will dive deeper and look at blood sugars. Um, and we typically do a, you know, what we call like a glycadian rhythm testing if it's using a finger pricker or we work with our medical staff um, at Advanced Vitality and we get our client a CGM that they can wear on the back of their arm for two weeks. We are able to track that through an app um, to kind of see what is going on. So when you are, you know, tracking this, there's some things that you need to understand that can affect it. Number one is cortisol stress. Everything starts and stops with stress. Like I have a number of clients that are very fit, seemingly healthy clients. They have blood sugars consistently in the hundreds. They aren't getting down very well. They aren't, you know, fasted are not very low. And a lot of that is because cortisol increases blood, blood sugars. That's part of cortisol's job. That's, that's a kind of, um, mechanism that is preventative for the body to get too low with blood sugars. That is why you wake up in the middle of the night more often than not. It's because your body is, the blood sugars are getting too low because your blood sugars are unstable for whatever reason. And when that happens, cortisol gets released so that cortisol can bring blood sugar back up. So if you have high cortisol, you will have high blood sugars. This is often what we see. And we see this a lot with diabetics. And then eventually what'll happen is that your cortisol gets so depleted and now you get to a point where you are hyperglycemic, hyper, I call it the hyperglycemic, yes. where it gets too low because your cortisol can't bring it up. And now you're dealing with like crashes, sleep. There is lots and lots of research that supports and shows a poor night of sleep basically puts you in a pre-diabetic state. Yep. One extra hour of sleep can bring down your glucose levels by five to 10 points. Like again, if you were tracking this on an average yep. day, you would notice that you're running a little bit lower because- this is a recovery for yeah. you, right? Um, your body kind of resets hormones, goes through all kinds of detoxification processes overnight. So sleep is really, really important. And I would say if you suspect there are blood sugar issues, the number one thing that we would tell people to do is not wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning and go to the gym and give yourself a hard you know, workout. And this has been a struggle for Liz and Becca as well, okay? Um, speaking from two people who have learned this ourselves, uh, Becca has struggled with blood sugar in the past. I've um, certainly been through hyperglycemic. Now I'm looking like a little bit hypo, like what the H is going on. Um, it's and crazy what the body can do, man. It is crazy what the body can do. And so it's, it's inflammation though, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's just a lot of things here. And training is something that does create inflammation. And we need some inflammation. We need acute inflammation, but we have to be able to recover. And sleep is recovery. So, you know, making sure that you're getting good restful sleep your circadian rhythm is really important. This is one thing I'm going to be talking about soon on my social media in terms of bowel retraining. People don't realize in order to retrain your bowels, to wake up in the morning, to have a normal formed stool within an hour of waking, you've got to have a good circadian rhythm. Um, and that comes down to starting with Am I getting into bed within the same 30 to 60 minutes every night, waking up within the same 30 to 60 minutes? You know, um, I try to wake up at the same time every day, weekends, maybe, you know, 30, 60 minutes, again, uh, a little bit shifted there, but you need to have a routine. We, the body likes routine. Babies like routine. We're basically just grown babies in some, some Truth. ways there. Uh, so that's, that's going to be really important. And then when we think about like foods, I think this is important to understand that, okay, so when we consume carbohydrates, depending upon the source of the carbohydrate, you may have some fibers in there, which we hope that you do if you're eating more whole foods, right? That will help um, with the partitioning of carbs and it won't be as many carbohydrates just hitting the blood, uh, your bloodstream like at the same time time, right? Um, also, if you compare it with things like starting your meal with apple cider vinegar, eating 
fibrous foods first, um, let's say like leafy greens or bitter greens or whatnot, eating some proteins first, some fat first, those are going to hit your digestive system first. And then as the carbs come in, those will help slow down the release into the bloodstream. So you're not getting these big spikes. Postprandial, you know, you should see a rise of 20 to 30 points. So if you took a blood sugar and you were at 95, let's say, We'd want to see you 20 to 30 points higher in the two hour range, but coming back down to that 95, at least, you know, within that two hour mark. So you should go up and then you should come down. And part of what helps you come down is insulin. So insulin helps you shuttle this glucose in to your cells. And this is what helps you fuel your mitochondria. These are the powerhouse energy sources of our cells. So without going too sciencey here, we have a variety of things that need to happen. And the mechanisms within the body are really, really cool. But you have some sugar transfer molecules that basically latch on to this insulin that's got the glucose and pull it into the cell and feed it to the mitochondria. So this is really important. So we have to consider glycemic index um, in terms of the types of food, right? There's going to be a significant difference between eating a donut and eating an apple. People fear fruits, yet they don't realize because of the fiber content and the fact that it's a natural sugar, it's less of a glycemic index. So we have a glycemic index that rates, I believe it's 40 to 100, if I'm not mistaken. Um, And so maybe a piece of fruit is 40. uh, And then you have, let's say your candy bar that is much higher at like a 70 or an 80 or whatnot, um, because pure glucose is at a hundred. That would be like the solution they give you to test Mm -hmm. your glucose in pregnancy. I think, is it 40 to a hundred? Am I mistaken there for the glucose index? Yeah, I think that's right. I think it's correct. Don't fact check us. I'm being, um, you know, going off the, the cuff here, just kind of talking about this. So one thing I wanted to bring up with this topic, and then we'll move into other things that impacts glucose with the glycemic index sucralose, which is a artificial sweetener that is apparently zero calories, right? Oh, let's eat this in my diet foods, my sugar-free jello. I'm definitely was guilty of this way back in the day doing Weight Watchers. Sucralose uh, is one, damaging to the gut. So this is where we think about saccharin and um, sucralose. In research, it has been shown when they fed it to rats, those rats developed leaky gut. What does leaky gut equal? Well, it equals a lot of problems in the body, but number one, inflammation. Things seep out into the bloodstream. Now your immune system's, you know, having to clear things out. It's identifying things, you know, these food particles are in the space that they shouldn't be, right? Food shouldn't be circulating in the blood. So it's got to, you know, remove these things and, and it attacks them essentially. So that's a level of inflammation and inflammatory response. So I wanted to just touch on besides the fact that it's really shitty for your body and it creates leaky gut and all kinds of GI distress with bloating and gas and all kinds of things, even though it's zero calories, the glycemic response is about an 80, 70 to 80 on the glycemic index. So this is worse for you in terms of blood sugar and inflammation and gut than eating the freaking apple. So whoever told you that carbs are bad and that you can't have carrots because they're too high in carbs and too high in sugar, you can tell them. They need to get re-educated on this topic because filling you with a lot of Franken foods, artificial sweeteners is not the answer. That's going to lead to worsening symptoms of obesity. Actually, the research shows this, and this is according to the WHO, which we all trust the WHO with everything, right? According to the WHO, sucralose and saccharin were the top two things to lead to insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and obesity. Yep. So what I want to hammer home here too, because a lot of people are like, well, I'm not overweight or I don't, I don't think that I have blood sugar issues. I see the same blood sugar issues with a, with basically a diabetic as you see with a stressed out individual. It creates the same situation. And this is why. So how blood sugar dysregulation basically happens One, you either eat too many carbohydrates or two, you are inconsistently eating, you're stressed out, you're drinking too much coffee, you're not eating enough calories. And so what happens is that when you do eat food, your blood sugars go kind of crazy because there's all of these other inputs and blood sugar will spike because you now have the combination of cortisol, caffeine, which spikes cortisol, which spikes blood sugar and stress. Stress is cortisol. All of these things spike blood sugar. And so then what happens is the pancreas 
makes tons of insulin because there's so much cortisol happening. There's so much blood sugar circulating. The pancreas is like, listen, pump out insulin. We need a lot of it. There's an enormous surge of glucose. So then that stresses the pancreas. And then with that super high of blood sugar, now comes a super low. And because of all of that insulin that was circulating, the blood sugar now drops super low, which is a crash. When that crash happens, your adrenals are like, whoa, 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 whoa. We cannot have this low blood sugar. This is dangerous because low blood sugar is extremely dangerous to the body. And so then the adrenals pump out cortisol again. And then it might even push out adrenaline. And as the adrenals basically do this, it puts the liver on like all systems ago because the liver is now breaking down muscle to create glucose. That is the gluconeogenesis that Liz just talked about. And so now we have your pancreas overworking, creating insulin. We have your adrenals overworking, creating cortisol. And we have your liver working to break down muscle. That can happen with someone that is not overweight, but is just stressed out of their mind. And so this is why we do continuous glucose monitors or blood perking with clients because we're like, listen, the symptoms you're having, the weight loss resistance, whatever's going on, there's something happening with blood sugar. And then you can also see what time of day it happens the most. You can see what types of food combinations maybe. I was noticing with mine, my sweet potatoes. Mm-hmm. I, you guys, sweet potatoes are probably one of my top two favorite foods. I told Becca, I was like, I'm going to be really sad for you. I was I like, I think it might be your sweet pretty potato. pretty positive because <laughs> I was having sweet potato at lunch based on my plan. Yeah. And I was getting bloated and I was also seeing a bigger spike in blood sugars that wasn't coming back down. I switched to white potatoes and they're normal again. Yeah. I love white sweet potatoes. I've been eating a lot of those mm-hmm. lately. Maybe I'll have to try them. Find them from Trader Joe's. Yeah. My husband says that they are a mix of white and sweet that are just confused. <laughs> Um, but there's all kinds of different sweet potatoes. There's like mm-hmm. the purple sweet potato. You could maybe try some of those um, as well. But this is just something that I think everyone should check for themselves. Yes. Um, Agreed. And you should understand this far beyond just what your doctor says. Oh, things look fine because, oh, you're less than 100 on your fasting glucose. So what do we want, right? We want this rise and fall. So you're going to see a little bit of a curve throughout the day, but you don't want peaks and valleys, right? So I want you just to imagine kind of like a wave here. You don't want the big spike up like a mountaintop Mm -hmm. and then straight down. Um, So we want to stay, again, between 70 and 90 with kind of like that ideal consistent goal being somewhere in the mid 80s. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, there's a lot of things that we would do to manage this, starting with stress. Yep. Starting with, you know, reducing the stress on the body. We do this a lot in our cleanse. People are like, you want me eating every few hours? I thought that, you know, that's not good for my digestive system. Well, we're also doing a few things with the diet uh, here during the cleanse. We're putting in a lot of low glycemic, high fiber foods, a lot of starchy root vegetables, as Becca just talked about, like sweet potatoes, right? Potatoes, we're using, um, you know, a lot of leafy greens, beets, carrots, you know, other vegetables that people can tolerate. Um, And then we're pairing a lot of easy to digest fuel sources that are high in micronutrients. And yes, this includes 100% juices. And again, they're very easy on the digestive system. So you're just getting the benefit of all of the nutrients here without your system having to process. Protein's the hardest thing for the body to process. It requires a lot of stomach acid. What's the number one thing that people are typically low in? Stomach acid. Um, And so, you know, we know between the age of 20 and 40, our stomach acid declines by like 40%. So when I get upstairs someday to the big man, I'm going to ask him why. And And we're going to ask him about menopause, right? Those two things, man. But I'm going to ask him why, why, why? Um, And so, you know, protein's a little bit lower, but we're using very intentional strategies with this to calm down as much stress on the body. And that includes as much stress on the digestive system, removing inflammatory foods, things that would be impacting blood sugar significantly, processed foods, franken foods, sucralose, things like that. We're calming down stress on the body by reducing training, walking a bit more, sleeping a bit more. We're removing as many toxins as we possibly can. We're flooding the body with hydration, opening up our drainage and detoxification pathways. All of these things are going to help no matter where you are in your journey, 
conquer and reverse any type of symptom and disease that you're experiencing. And the big thing that a lot of this comes back to is inflammation. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that your blood sugar could be high because of inflammation that's not even caused by your food. Now, there are cases where I tell a few of my clients, we need an MRT, but not for everyone, but I've had a few cases this week, really high markers on a GI map after the cleanse, we need an MRT. Mm -hmm. You're really inflamed. You're really reactive to something. Yep. That inflammation, though, could not be coming from a food that you're ingesting. It could be bacterial sources that you have in terms of you know, an overgrowth of bad bacteria, fungi, mold, yeast, heavy metals, things like that. Um, it could be toxic relationships in your life. It could be, again, that overtraining. It could be a response to many things, just, again, that you think you handle well, but your body is experiencing a chronically inflamed state. And so that's also going to bring your core, your, um, well, your cortisol levels up too, but it's also going to bring your blood sugars up. And so it's vast and varied. And I'm going to let Becca touch on the sex hormone part because sex hormones impact this heavily as well. Yeah, so... A lot of, there's a hard part with estrogen and estrogen's relationship with cortisol and blood sugars, but in a very basic terms, estrogen will cause higher levels of blood sugar. So if you have high estrogen, high, like an estrogen dominant situation, we often see people have blood sugar issues. And this can also be impacted by the inability of someone to detox estrogen out of the body, um, which is often a big driver of estrogen dominance. Um, but if you are dealing with really heavy periods, if you are dealing with, you know, um, PMS, headaches, migraines, clotting during your period, like you shouldn't be seeing heavy clots coming out during your cycle on tampons or anything like that. Um, all of those are signs of estrogen dominance situations and it will cause higher cortisol and it will in turn cause higher blood sugar levels. So, Estrogen is a Goldilocks hormone. You need it to be just right. You don't want it too high. You don't want it too low. If it gets too low, you can also deal with bad symptoms as well. Um, and a big thing that we talk about, Liz mentioned on the consistent meal timing, the reason also that we eat so consistently is because if you are eating consistently, it prevents your body from using cortisol to create blood sugar. Mm. And so this is another way that the body will help stabilize blood sugars and lower cortisol. Um, and we always tell people you need to be eating within two hours of waking. Like I don't care about fasting when the body is stressed and your blood sugars are all over the place. Um, we need to get that down. The only time that I would utilize fasting is if someone has a really high fasting insulin, that would be a time once we work on obviously inflammation and other systemic factors, that is where fasting can be really helpful is to manage and bring insulin down. Um, but you want to be eating every three to four hours. Your intake, like Liz mentioned with the glycemic index, very high fiber foods. That is a great thing to focus on because high fiber foods will help with the glycemic index. It minimizes simple sugars. It minimizes processed carbs. It replaces them with whole foods like fruits and vegetables and oats and quinoa and beans and lentils which helps slow the absorption of glucose into the bloodstream. And yes, too much protein can be a problem, but you want some protein. Um, we actually don't do super high protein during the cleanse and during our digest, um, our you know feed digestive focused phase. Uh, and a lot of people actually um, with super high protein, they mess up their blood sugars too. We see this all the time with people that are you know, consistent macro counters that are really high protein that used to be Liz and I, mm -hmm. um, you know, that work out a ton. You are and taking BCAAs all day, like you're drinking BCAAs all day. That will spike your blood sugars too. Um, so you need to be focused on the balancing of your plate. You know, most of your plate should be vegetables. Uh, a fourth would be protein. A fourth would be starch. A small amount would be fats. Um, hydration is another huge aspect of blood sugars. So if you are dehydrated, you are going to have higher blood sugar levels. Um, we've talked about this on previous podcasts where we see, you know, for, especially for someone that has higher blood sugars because of stress, actually increasing their electrolyte intake and increasing their sodium from good sources can help lower blood sugars um, because it helps for the function of the cell as well. Uh, and then sometimes we'll utilize supplements. You know, if someone really has blood sugar issues that we're seeing that are just not being manipulated much with diet variation or with protein variation or manipulation, um, we will put in place Insinase is a great uh, product. This is something that helps your fat tissue communicate with insulin. 
um, and can be used a lot of times in like stubborn weight loss, especially if people are having stubborn weight loss around the midsection. Berberine is great. Uh, berberine, the hard, only hard thing with berberine, and a lot of these is you will become adapted to them. So if people take berberine constantly, um, you can sometimes see like an adaptation and not really have as much of an effect. But berberine is very similar to metformin in terms of its function. Uh, we love GDA Max. GDA Max is a product that you can use with high carb meals um, to help the management of carbohydrates and glucose with that meal. We use ultra glucose medical food. Um, we love ultra glucose medical food. It is very helpful. Um, but other things like glutamine, alpha lipoic acid, L-carnitine, all of those are can be really helpful with body's glucose uptake and insulin sensitivity. So there's a lot of tools you can use, but you have to go back to the diet you have to go back to your stress. Like there's layers to functional health and there's layers to how you manage things. And the first layer of that always is you. Like what are you doing that is stressing out your body that is causing blood sugars to be all out of whack? And before you say, I'm not stressed, you're obviously stressed because your body is showing us that you're stressed. So don't pull that. It is very clear physiologically that your body is stressed. So where is that stress coming from? Is it mental, emotional that you aren't addressing? Is it something deep, deep, deep in that, you know, brain or gut or something that you are not seeing or being willing to see? Um, because something's causing it. Yep. So that's what we do. If you want to get to the root cause, you want to look at all 12 systems of the body and understand your body and the ins and outs of how it works, why you are experiencing the symptoms that you are experiencing. You can hit the link in the show notes to schedule a call with our team. We typically do a 15 minute discovery call to see if it's a good fit. And then you will be moved onto a 30 minute uh, Zoom call with myself or with Becca. And we can take a deep dive into your situation, what you got going on and how we can help. So with that, we hope you guys have a fabulous day and we'll be back very soon.